Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video, where today, I'm going to be sharing a build with you all using the new Jar Sword Spark. This was actually requested by a viewer, and I will leave his name on the screen, because I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I might screw up, and that's embarrassing. So, for this build, the main thing I went for was affinity, because he requested it. He wanted a 100% affinity Jar Sword Spark build. So I did that. I got it to 105% on weak spots, and I even threw in 4 Handicraft and 3 Thunder Attack, because this weapon can have a max of 3 Bolt Jewels, and it gets the most out of them. Like, you can see here, from 390 to 430, that's the plus 40 from plus 60 to 100, and it doesn't go up any higher. So if I take off a Tenderizer, just as an example, to put in another Bolt Jewel, it doesn't go any higher. So, three Bolt Jewels to max out the Thunder Attack. Two Handicraft Jewels to max it, well not max it out, but you get four Handicraft, which this weapon needs three to get white. And I had a spare slot, so I put in another Handicraft. You need the Master's Charm to max out the Critical Eye, and I put an Attack jewel in there to get that plus five percent affinity once you reach four attack so because I removed the, the handicraft jewel it removed some of our sharpness but it's okay we'll get ourselves up to uh, red gauge But because of how the longsword does its motion values for elemental on the spirit helmbreaker, you're not doing the most damage that you could with it. Like, it's still quite a bit. But uh, raw is definitely going to be the better choice whenever you're doing spirit helmbreaker on monsters. Since the, the formula for it is much more heavily weighted towards raw instead of elemental damage. But if you're not focused on getting Helmbreakers and you're just doing damage with Red Gauge, then just keeping your, your Red Gauge up, of course, and then using the Spirit combo for damage is going to be your best choice. But any free opportunities you do get of course, you got to use that spirit helmbreaker, and that's that's pretty much all. If you are having trouble with a monster and you really, really need some help, then you can swap out the bolt jewels for vitality jewels and put in some health boost. Like if you want to use this build against Arch Tempered Cold Taroth when she comes back, then and if you're having trouble with fainting because you you just can't get out of the way of her attack, or you, I don't know, that Lava Man, it really shreds your health, then having some health boost would be nice, just so you can stay alive that little bit longer. But if you are a master at fighting Culve, like I am, and you rarely ever faint to her, because you farmed her so many times trying to get that one weapon that you never got because RNG hates you, then feel free to go out all on attack. But if you do have a build request, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I will try my best to make it as good as I possibly can. And hopefully I meet your uh, specifications. But that'll be it for this video. If you've enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel, where I post gaming videos like this every single day. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Oh, bye bye